Hey everybody, it's Sean again, and thanks again for coming to another GeoTracker tutorial. This one we're going to look at the camera tracking, uh, which is a pretty cool feature. Uh, it works exactly the same way. It tracks geometry through a shot, uh, but instead of applying the data to an object, to, a, an, to whatever that geometry is, it applies the data to the camera and leaves the object stationary, and thus you get a camera track. Uh, I think uh, as you use it more and more, you'll understand the kinds of shots that it's more useful for. I don't think it's an all-around motion tracking solution. Uh, I think it would struggle with a lot of stuff, but it's very useful. It's very cool. Uh, it's just amazing that it does it, so let's dive in and try it out. So I'm going to delete the light. We don't need that. We are going to use this box, though, but we are going to put it on the ground. So I'm going to go tab gz1 enter tab and all that does is puts it moves it up one unit to put it on the ground uh, i'm also going to scale it in x nice and thin and scale it in y nice and long and when hit apply apply those and another thing i've learned uh, through practicing this a few times and tracking a bunch of stuff is uh, the wireframe is important, right? Because GeoTracker lights up the wireframe bright green for you to be able to position it and see it. Uh, and if you have this object and it's in wireframe, uh, you don't see very much. So uh, what I would suggest doing if you're doing a wall or something like this, let me show you the footage we're tracking. This is what we're going to track. Uh, we're not going to do the whole thing. It's like 848 frames. We, we didn't got time for that. So uh, we're just going to do the first maybe 200. It captures this nice little sideways drift and then starts going down uh, down this alley thing here. So we're just going to do the first 200. But we're going to track this wall over here. I think you could probably do either. This one kind of goes out of frame. This one on the right goes out of frame earlier. So it's safer to track the one that's in frame the whole shot. So we're going to track this section. Uh, and this is kind of what we're doing. So uh, to track that, you need to see it, right? So we, we're going to put some more, uh, we're going to tab into edit mode and put some more loop cuts in here just so we can see when GeoTracker lights it up green, we want to be able to see more of it. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch in here, hit enter, enter, and do the same thing vertically, enter, enter, and we are good to go. Go back to our shading mode, and there we go. We know it has... Oh, did I apply scale already? If not, I'm doing it again. Uh, and there we go. We're good to go. So let's go ahead and create our geo tracker. Uh, we've got uh, same thing as when we did the face. We've got the cube already plugged in the camera. Let's go find our footage. Scroll down here, right here. Select the whole thing, all of it. Load clip. It's looking to analyze it. We're going to hit analyze. And like I said, we're not going to do all 848. We're going to do like 200 ish, whatever you want to do. Hit OK, and it starts analyzing. I'm also going to set this to 200, just so we have a better idea. Uh, and it goes a little bit slower now. Uh, I think it's larger footage than the other one. Uh, I think this is almost 4K, right? I think so. And uh, yeah, it's obviously more frames, so uh, I will come back right before it's done. Okay, it's just about done. You can see it coming back from doing the backwards analyze. Uh, again, I, uh, like I said in the face tracker one, I think what it's doing is an optical flow. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure it's an optical flow analysis of the frames. So it knows where every pixel is going on every frame uh, and can drive uh, motion from that. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go ahead into our camera view. And uh, this should look pretty familiar. We don't have to set up the ground plane like we did in the other one, uh, the face tracking one, because uh, the whole point of this is it's going to reposition the camera correctly based on on where our wall is. And our wall is sitting on the ground plane, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to do it just fine. So let's go ahead and switch this to camera instead of geometry, which tells it where it's going to put the data. Uh, the motion data, it's either going to go on, on the geometry or on the camera, or we want it on the camera. And we can even turn this on as well, estimate focal length. That can be helpful. Uh, so we'll, we'll turn that on for now and see how that goes. 
and then let's just do start pin mode and see what happens. So here you can see why we put loop cuts in our geometry, right? If these loop cuts weren't here, you wouldn't see that thing at all. So there's a few other things we can do to see it better as well. Uh, down here under appearance, <coughs> excuse me, uh, there's this wireframe brightness. Let's crank that up all the way. Uh, you can even change the color if you want, but I think we're okay here. Um, it's got this adaptive opacity. Uh, looks brighter with it off. I'm gonna leave it off. Uh, pins exposed. This is what we want. Background, right? We can turn down the exposure a bit so we can see exactly what we're doing, which is great. So now let's. Uh, I'm gonna start with this corner back here. I'm gonna pin this guy right there, and then I'm gonna bring this corner way up here. Uh, so what I'm looking at as I line this up, right? I've got this wall back here pinned pretty good, I think. Got it right there. Got it right there. Looks good. This is where it needs to be. Um, yeah, like that. Uh, so now what we need to do is get the angle correct, right? The perspective. So I'm kind of looking at this line right here in the footage these lines all kind of like maybe there was another building here or some kind of roof or something or lean to uh, but those kind of give us a hint as to the perspective so I'm just kind of trying to get this guy lined up with that that those marks in the footage and I think that looks pretty dang good so let's go ahead and uh, uh, track forward right track forward let's see what happens uh, it looks like it's sticking pretty good Sadly, it doesn't keep that exposure on all the other, the following frames. Uh, I think it does keep it on the frame where we set it on. Uh, I wonder why. Oh yeah, just exposure in current frame. So you literally have to do it uh, per frame. So that's interesting. So there we go. Uh, another thing you can do, you can reset that. Uh, so now it's all set. Another thing you can do if you want is under the camera settings, obviously you can background image and turn that way down and then you can get a better idea of how it's tracking and that looks pretty dang good I don't think we have to refine anything or do anything uh, it doesn't come all the way down to the edge here but maybe we can fix that uh, if I exit pin mode and we go to our 3d view you can see now that the wall does not move but the camera does which is spectacular you can go here look at your motion path if you want calculate it do it display turn off all that junk uh, in there there you go there's our camera path uh, so that's pretty cool right uh, this is a pretty straightforward simple shot uh, so it kind of makes sense uh, now that we can kind of extend some things out right da, 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 uh, e extend that out let me leave that right there actually and go back into camera view go to wireframe is that helpful at all uh, GY just trying to get it lined up with like the edge of the door there like right there um, then I want to go pick all these frames uh, right, like all this stuff pick all these guys and move them in a bit and move them on X G X kind of get the wall Kind of the right dimension there and uh, we could go up further as well up there but uh, I think we're all right for now uh, we've got that wall kind of blocked in another thing we can do texture uh, current frame just uh, you got to be has overlapping UVs so let's do um, <laughs> it wrecked it that's funny um, that's from the uh, because we extruded that out. So let's go uh, U unwrap. Uh, that's better, but we got to retexture it. Current frame, do it again. Better? No, still broken. Um, let's go, uh, let's smart frame it or smart UV it. Tab U smart UV project. I always leave a little bit of a gap. Okay, tab. Uh, and now. Back in here. Don't give me that error. Boom. Nailed it. So now when we look in here, now you've got your wall texture as well. So you're kind of rebuilding the set, which is uh, spectacular. Uh, 
what else can we do? We can also do, uh, now that we've got the scene set up, we can add in other things, right? Like this, right? Rotate Y, what is that? Negative 90, uh, tab GZ1, enter tab. Puts it on the ground plane. Uh, let's move it down here a little bit. Uh, let's duplicate one and put it back here and rotate it on Z, 90 degrees. Uh, that's a good start. Let's grab this guy, go back into our camera view. And now we can line up this wall as well, right? Scale Z, bring it down. Scale Y, make it longer. And there we go. Now that lines up great. We could do this one back here. This one back here is pretty far away. So it could get uh, it could get tricky. Um, G, Y, but maybe not. Maybe let's try. C, Z, scale X. Let's see, where's the frame where you see a lot of that wall? Well, I guess it's right there, right? It's pretty good. Uh, I might even, uh, let's do this. Rotate it a tiny bit. I guess this ground isn't perfectly flat, maybe. Uh, but we'll see. But that looks pretty good, right? And we can go back to this frame. What is that? Frame 120. We can go into shading and with that guy selected, add a new surface and bring in a new image texture and I said that was frame 120 right 120 so let's go find 120 yeah come on come on come on 120 open image select these two guys hit F connects it uh, we do need to UV map that guy uh, and go U and unwrap project from view tab out of that go back into layout and when we go back here it should be the wall so there you go that's how easy it is to start uh, putting together your whole scene uh, I mean we could use the plane for this but I kind of wanted to get this little edge here too so even though the the archway is starting to happen anyway you get the idea uh, pretty slick right Pretty slick to just be able to throw together a camera track like that. Uh, really neat. Such a great tool. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, have fun with that. And uh, yeah, Keen Tools, they've made some great stuff. Uh, they've even got, uh, I think, if I remember correctly, for Nuke, they have uh, deforming geometry that it can track. Uh, it'd be great to see that come into Blender someday. You're literally tracking people talking and stuff like that. That'd be astounding. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I hope this was helpful and uh, yeah, leave me some comments, whatever. Uh, tell me what you think or if you've done projects with it, I would love to see them as well. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.